Okay, good morning. Really cool to have you all here. Happy Monday. Hope you had a great weekend. Um, just as a quick review, uh, if you have lab on Friday or, or Wednesday, if your lab's on Wednesday, uh, the things that are happening this week is you'll turn in the Le Chatelier's principal lab that we did last week. The rough draft of the class presentation paper is due. And again, the rough draft is just uh, a way for you to show me that you're thinking about your class presentation. It certainly doesn't have to be polished up or anything like that. But to me, the rough draft class presentation paper will have three important pieces. Number one, you'll have at least two type pages on your subject. More is great, but at least two type pages, like give it a shot and stuff. And they can be even outline form. I'm not worried about that, but just something. All right, you have some stuff down. Uh, second thing is that you have found one peer-reviewed science article from the Mount Hood Library's website, and you included the abstract and the citation. And in the syllabus or online, you can see in the class presentations, frequently asked questions back. Uh, there's a website in there from the Mount Hood Library, and I'm hoping it's very easy for you to do. You click on it. Uh, if you're on Mount Hood, you want to enter any information. If you're off campus, you have to enter in your, your email information. But you'll enter that in and search for your topic, all right? And there should be a lot of stuff that pops up. I want you to include the abstract and the citation of a science peer-reviewed article. I don't want the whole article. I just want you literally to copy and paste all right, the abstract and with the citation in it. And finally, uh, with the rough draft, there is a cover sheet, all right? Cover sheet is just something you'll put in the front. I want you to have that there so it shows you like the dates of everything that's happened to you and stuff like that. Uh, any questions on the rough draft part? Sweet. Also, problem set number three is up. Uh, we'll take quiz number three, and then the lab this week, titration calculations. Uh, we'll focus more on the stuff we're gonna talk about today, so. Oh boy. Anything, uh, any questions on any of this stuff? If you do have questions, you let me know. It's good to have you all here. All right, so on Friday, uh, we barely began uh, an introduction to this next section. And so far in chapter 14, part two, which is acids and bases together, we looked at how the uh, common ion effect can be used to explain buffers, which is really cool. But buffers are also part of the titration regions. My goal for you in this section is to find the pH of any acid and base that you mix together, all right? And in order to do that, we will talk about these titrations. And just because we're doing a quote unquote titration doesn't mean you can't use these to figure out pHs and hydroniums and stuff of any acid and base coming together. So that's kind of the end game here. All right, I want you to find, be able to find pH of almost any acid and base coming together. And we'll use these titrations as a method to make that happen. So titrations are more for more than just titrations. That's kind of the punchline of this problem. Um, as we talked about on Friday, uh, there's four kinds of titrations we're gonna look at, all right? Those are strong acid plus strong base, strong base plus strong acid, and by the way, the nomenclature here, the first thing listed is what you have in the Erlenmeyer flask or beaker. And the second thing listed is what you're adding from the burette. So this cool little graphic I found over the weekend, uh, it has an acid down here, HCl, so that's what we're starting with. And in the burette, you're adding a strong base, all right? So this would be an Sa plus Sb in my uh, world here. Now, an Sb plus Sa, you'd have these chemicals reversed. So NaOH would be down here, and the HCl would be up there. So what you're adding is the second part, and what you're starting with is the first part. Um, we're also looking at when you start with a weak acid and you add strong base to it. This is probably the most common of all of them. And weak base plus strong acid is also really common because there's again a gazillion weak acids and weak bases and not that many strong acids, strong bases. Now all these titrations look kind of like an S 
And then if it's an acid in a base, then it definitely looks like an S. Um, bases with acids are kind of like a reverse S. So if you use your imagination a little bit, it's kind of an S2. Um, <clears throat> you can tell right away from the equivalence point what kind of system you started with, all right? The equivalence point is going to be the middle point of this more or less straight up and down part, all right? Sometimes it's a little bit more curved, but it's, it's often it's straight up and down. And the middle point is the equivalence point. Equivalence in this region, in this uh, territory, means that moles of what you started with equal moles of what you're adding. All right, so if this was a strong acid plus strong base, the equivalence point means that the moles of the HCl, for example, would equal the moles of the NaOH. Now, strong acids and strong bases, when they react, they create pH neutral ions. So for example, HNO3 makes nitrate and NaOH makes Na+. And those don't have any effect on the pH. So the equivalence point pH for both of those is gonna be seven. Notice that if you start with a weak acid, your pH is going to be a little bit basic at equivalence because all the weak acid is turned into its conjugate base, and bases have pHs greater than 7. On the other hand, weak base plus strong acid at equivalence, all the weak base has turned into acids, and acids have pHs less than 7. So Aiden hands me some random acid, and I don't know what it is. Well, if I titrate it, all right, the equivalence point, if it's equal to seven, that means that his acid was a strong acid. On the other hand, what's very, very common is there's so many weak acids, probably the equivalence point would be a little above seven. So that would mean it was a weak acid. So you can quickly tell, usually, if your system is weak and strong and stuff like that. Questions so far? Okay, so you can see that the chemists are making a big deal of equivalence point. You can also probably imagine there's going to be a big deal when you haven't added any of the titrate, when you haven't added any of the second part. So initial and equivalence are two of the regions that are common in these titration calculations. The other two regions, there's four total, the other two regions are the pre-equivalence region, which is where what you're adding, the second one, is less than in moles than the stuff you started with. On the other hand, post-equivalence then, you've gone past equivalence. Post-equivalence now means what you're adding, you have more moles of it than you have moles of what you started with. So these regions are helpful because each region has its own little formula, its own little plug and chug. Dare I say, its own little cheese equation. <laughs> Going back to Clifford from last week, man. Sorry, I was going to try and make this a vegan week, but obviously that failed already and it's not hardly 9 o'clock. Anyway, yeah, it's each going to have their own region. So that way you can plug in the amounts of moles and stuff to figure out pHs and it's pretty chill. Um, buffers are going to show up in the pre-equivalence regions for weak acid strong base and weak base strong acids. And that's why that's going to be good. We'll come back to the HH equation and stuff like that. And finally, this week, we're going to do examples of all of these. Um, you're going to, at first, it's a little weird, but after this week, I'm really hoping you're going to be like, yeah, I got this. They're all plug and chug, I kid you not. Any questions? Any? Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go through some examples of how this all works. And again, at first it's a little weird, but I want you to not be intimidated by it, and that's the goal. A couple more things about acids and bases. Remember that strong acids and strong bases push the reaction to the other side. That's right. They are totally product favored, one-sided error, and that's why what we add is always a strong acid or a strong base. If you added a weak acid or a weak base, then you'd have to think about Ka's and concentrations. And honestly, it's a pain and it's not necessary. So strong acids and strong bases push to the opposite sides. The weak acids and weak bases will create their conjugates, all right? And that's gonna have some effect on the pH as you go through. Ka and Kb are helpful when it comes to weak acids and weak bases. And if they are conjugates of each other, then remember Ka times Kb is also equal to Kw. Kw is the only equilibrium constant you have to know, the 10 to the minus 14. Pka would be minus log of Ka, Pkb minus log of Kb. 
and pKa plus pKb will equal 14. This can be helpful and stuff as you go through these different sections. Um, the initial concentration of either what you're adding or what you started with is helpful, and the volume of titrant added will also be helpful. And we'll see this as we go through and stuff these different calculations. So with that being said, let's look at the first of these four types. Let's look at the strong acid, strong base, and see how you too can knock these on their backside. A molecule of hydrogen chloride and a water molecule encounter each other. They react to form a hydronium ion, H3O+, and a chloride ion. When sodium hydroxide enters the solution, it splits into sodium and hydroxide ions. The hydroxide ion and the hydronium ion react readily with each other to form two molecules of water. Sodium and chloride ions are left in solution. A lot of energy is created in the formation of water, and that's the driving force for basically all these reactions. When you have a strong acid and a strong base, the conjugates, the pieces that are left over, have no effect on pH. So the Na plus and the Cl minus, they just sit on the side and watch everything happen, but they're not really doing anything in terms of pH. So this is an example of an S kind of curve. And again, you have to use your imagination here, but it's kind of an S curve. Sometimes you'll see little dips because experimental data is experimental data. That's okay too. But overall, it is kind of an S curve. You can see it starts out acidic, all right? That's because initially you have only moles of strong acid. Now in Chem 222, N was the symbol for moles in the ideal gas law, and N is often the symbol for moles in these kind of problems too. So NSA is not National Security Agency, it's moles of strong acid, all right? And if you're thinking about moles of strong acid versus moles of strong base, NSB, you can start to see where these pieces start to come in. So initially, you have only the strong acid. You're at zero milliliters of what you're adding, the titrant, which would be the strong base, and you have an acidic pH. <clears throat> at equivalence, moles of strong acid and moles of strong base are equal to each other. So as we saw in this video, you basically have water and ions which don't affect pH. So your pH should be really, really close to seven. Sometimes pure water is a little acidic, so it might be a little bit plus or minus seven, but it will be very, very close to seven. In the so-called pre-equivalence region, you're going from where you start to the place where the moles are equal to each other. Moles of your strong acid will be greater than the moles of the strong base. And up until this point, you should have an acidic pH, but you can see that as you follow this trend, it's getting more and more basic. The numbers are getting larger. That's because you keep adding more moles of base as you go along. And then finally, in the post-equivalence region, which is past the equivalence, now the moles of strong base are greater than the moles of the strong acid. Your pH is more basic, it should be greater than seven. So we're gonna look now at the next slide at the four equations that are used for initial, pre-equivalence, equivalence, and post-equivalence. But here's a question you can do right away. I wanna make sure this is very clear. If you are at equivalence for a strong acid plus strong base, NaOH plus HCl, HNO3 plus KOH, any of these kind of combinations, what is your pH gonna be? Seven. Seven, right on. Strong acid plus strong bases at equivalence will have a pH of seven. And that's a really cool thing, because if you don't know what kind of an acid or base you have, maybe no one's ever looked at it before, uh, this would be a way to verify. If your equivalence point was greater than seven, that's gonna be a weak system. We'll talk about those here coming up. Questions on that? So in the strong acid, strong base, there's essentially four equations. These equations look different sometimes, and I'll talk about how you can do one from the other. But if you're thinking about these equations in terms of moles and volume, then pH of just a strong acid, because we haven't had any strong base, 
minus log the concentration of your strong acid. <clears throat> so if it was 0.1 mole per liter, you'd go minus log 0.1. Now, this is going to be helpful to you if you really are doing a titration. You're going to need to know the volume of strong acid that you started with, which is something you can measure. And if you have the concentration of the strong acid, moles per liter times the liters is going to equal moles. So if you have the moles of NSA, it is really helpful. That number won't change. One thing I will say is that in these equations I'm going to show, your volume is almost always liters, all right? So just FYI on that. We will record milliliters in the lab, but when you're calculating things, you want to make sure you use liters. Just like, it's kind of like with temperature, all right? Like in a science lab, you usually record in Celsius, but if you're going to do anything with it, it's almost always Kelvin. So we're doing the same thing here. We're recording in milliliters, but we're going to use liters in the calculations. Okay, in the pre-equivalence region now, you've added some base, but you have more moles of strong acid than you have moles of base. So to figure out the pH here, and again, this is cheese equations to the nth power, <laughs> all right? You need to figure out the leftover moles of strong acid you've got. So moles of strong acid minus strong, moles of strong base up to the equivalence point, not including equivalence, but up to, you're going to have a positive number. And that will tell you the moles of strong acid that are left over. <clears throat> Because it's a strong acid, minus log hydronium is the pH, so minus log moles of strong acid. But you do need to figure out the total volume, because the moles of strong acid that are left over will be diluted by not only the volume of the strong acid you started with, but also the volume of the strong base you have. So pH for any acidic system, minus log hydronium, minus log moles of strong acid left over divided by volume. That's how you're going to find the pH. At equivalence, it's easy because at equivalence, the moles of strong acid and strong base are equal. And like we've talked about now, if you have strong acid plus strong base coming together, they neutralize each other. And everything that's left over is either pH neutral, which doesn't affect it, or it's water. And most of the time, pH of water is pretty close to 7. So your equivalence point should be a pH of 7. And then finally, a post-equivalence, now you've got more base than acid, all right? And if you have a base, the pH equation, 14 plus log hydroxide. So that's why it changes form. It's not minus log hydronium, now it's 14 plus log hydroxide. So to find the moles per liter of hydroxide, you need to find the leftover moles of strong base. So whatever moles of strong base you have, minus the moles of strong acid you started with, that'll be a non-zero, non-negative non number. You're going to have some positive number over there. And just like up here, you need to divide by the total volume of your system. So you're finding the leftover moles of strong base, dividing it by the total volume, 14 plus log hydroxide, you should get a pH which is greater than 7. So what we'll do now is we'll go through an example of how to do some of these. And once you see how it's done, it is pretty chill, but at first I know, oh, so sound effects not necessary, let's go through and I want you to see how this is pretty chill. Okay, so here's an example of a problem you might see. We've got 50 milliliters of a 0 0.100 molar HCl solution, and we're going to titrate it with NaOH. Stop right there. HCl, what kind of system? Strong, weak, strong. acid, weak. Strong, acid, good. I'm hoping this is getting really chill to you, but I want to make sure it's really good. Remember, there's only five strong acids. So important that you know them. HCl, HBr, HI, HNO3, HClO4. All right, those five strong acids. Every other acid is going to be weak. Sodium hydroxide, what kind of thing is that? Base. Base, strong or weak? Strong. Strong. Only three strong bases, NaOH, KOH, LiOH. All right, so if you know those five strong acids and three strong bases, they'll help you. 
in this problem, we are starting with a strong acid. We know the volume and the concentration. That's what we're starting with. So we would write Sa plus, and the part we're adding here is strong base, all right? So right away, after stopping after this first sentence, you have an Sa plus Sb titration. Strong acid, volume and concentration, and you're titrating it with sodium hydroxide, so Sa plus Asb. So the first part says, what's the pH of the initial solution? All right, well, HCl, strong acid, 100 killer, all these kind of things, doesn't stick around as HCl. It reacts right away with water, single arrow, to make chloride, which is pH boring, I mean, it doesn't do anything, and hydronium, all right? So all the HCl becomes hydronium. So pH at this point, if you remember the HCl is a strong acid, NaOH is a strong base, this is an Sa plus Sb titration. Other strong acids and strong bases, just trying to tell you all these things. <clears throat> so strong acids, here we go. pH minus log hydronium, all right? And again, all the HCl goes to hydronium. It's a one-sided arrow. That's the advantage, if you will, of strong acids and strong bases. So there's a couple ways you could do this. The way that I would do it right here is go pH minus log hydronium. And, whoops, wrong problem. This one right here is the HCl, and all of this goes to hydronium. So you can literally just put the 0.1 right in there. Your pH is gonna be 1.000. This is a three sig fig number. We took the logarithm of it. When you do a logarithm, then the number of sig figs is the number of digits past the decimal. So three sig figs would be 1.000 for these kind of problems. Oh boy. That would be very acidic. Say again? That would be very acidic. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, for what it's worth, Stephanie, on Friday, you used 12 molar HCl, all right? And if you want, minus log of 12 uh, you get an even more acidic number. So that's why I really wanted you to be careful with that acid, man, because, uh, yeah, I like you. Maybe not John. No, I'm just joking. John, I don't want you to wear glasses too, but seriously, yeah, it's really powerful, man. We're dealing with the big kids' chemicals now. No messing around. But it is really acidic stuff. Any questions? All right. So, <clears throat> cool. A lot of these questions then will have, what's the pH after X milliliters of titrant have been added? And this is an example of that kind of question. So in this question, we've now got 45 milliliters of sodium hydroxide that have been added. 45 milliliters of 0.1 molar NaOH. Now notice in this problem, I intentionally made the concentrations of the strong acid and strong base the same, all right? We started with 50 milliliters of strong acid, and here we've had 45 milliliters of NaOH. So my first question, are we at equivalence? Are the moles equal to each other? No. No, good. Molarity times volume in liters is gonna give you moles. And you, need, you can do the math if you want to, and we'll do that here in a little bit. But moles per liter times this in liters will get you NSA, the moles of strong acid. Here, we have the same molarity, but we don't have the same volume, all right? So moles per liter NaOH times this in liters will be a number less than this combination. So we are not at equivalence yet. That's a really fast way to see that we are at the pre-equivalence region. Okay, so if you don't see that, and that's totally fine, you can do this mathematically too. Uh, to figure out what region you're in, it's all about the moles. So you need to calculate NSA, the moles of strong acid, and NSB, the moles of strong base. Molarity is moles per liter and you need to multiply, like I said earlier, by the liters. How many milliliters in a liter? That's thousand, right on. That'll be something you'll use a lot in this section. So 50 milliliters divided by a thousand, 0.050 liters, all right? 
we multiply moles per liter times liters, 0 0.0050 moles of HCl. Oh, that's all the moles we have. That's the NSA here. And you can do the same kind of thing for the base. The base is also 0.1 moles per liter. The volume, 45, divided by 1,000 first to get 0 0.045. So liters times moles per liter for the sodium hydroxide, 0 0.0045. These are the numbers you can compare to see like what region you're in. And here you can see there's more strong acid than there is strong base. So that's really how you can find what region you're in. This number is bigger than this number. That's the ultimate way. So we're gonna use the pre-equivalence uh, equation we saw earlier uh, in order to figure this out. This number is going to be important because this is all the HCl we start with. And in this problem, this number will not change, all right? As long as you don't add any more volume, and that doesn't usually happen, then the HCl moles will stay the same. It's the other one, the moles of strong base, which are going to change as you go through here. Any questions on that? So, so NSA was 0 0.005, NSB 0 0.0045. When you're in the pre-equivalence region, the moles of strong acid are still bigger than the moles of strong base. So NSA minus NSB is gonna give a positive number. Uh, so you can see that's what's being done right here. <clears throat> On the other hand, when you figure out the moles that are left over of strong acid, you need to divide by the total volume at this point. All right, so notice we added the volume of the strong acid, 50 milliliters or 0 0.050 liters, to the volume in liters of the strong base. And your pH here comes out to be 2.3. All right, very, very small. Officially, this minus this is a one sig fig number. So there's only one digit to the right of the decimal there to show it. If you included two, it's not the end of the world, but officially. Uh, your pH should be higher than it was at the initial point. So in the initial point that Stephanie made the comment, it was exactly one. Now it's 2.3. And that makes sense because you have added a base. Remember, adding base, pH goes up. Adding acid, pH goes down. Cool. All right. So now the question is, what's going to be the pH at the equivalence point? All right. And again, kind of hitting this over the head too much maybe here a little bit. But at the equivalence point, moles of strong acid, HCl, equal moles of strong base. And when you have equal moles of strong acid, strong base, you've got sodium and chloride, conjugates of the strong systems, and they don't do anything to pH. But water has a pH of 7. So really, there's no calculations necessary when you get to equivalence point. If it's a strong acid plus strong base or strong base plus strong acid, you can literally just put down 7. Now, in your calculator, if you try to go minus log NSA minus NSB over the total volume, your calculator starts to spaz because you get minus log of 0. All right, And again, that uh, freaks your calculator out. So if you're doing this, if you're doing lots of them, and you get to a point where your calculator goes undefined or something, that means you're at equivalent, all right? That means you've gotten to this point. Minus log of zero doesn't work in the logarithm world. Don't. All right. The volume required to get to equivalence can be calculated. So we started with 50 milliliters of 0 0.100 molar HCl. So you can see right down here, uh, we took that, this times this, we saw earlier was 0 0.0050. Well, equivalence means that one mole of strong acid reacts with one mole of strong base. So the moles are equal to each other. Well, sodium hydroxide is 0 0.100 moles per liter. So if you take the moles of strong base and divide it by the concentration, that's going to give you a volume. And it takes 50 milliliters of NaOH to read equivalence. 
And that's not a big deal here because the concentrations are the same. The volume should be the same too. But if the concentrations were different, this is the way that you can calculate how much volume it actually takes to reach equivalence. Prop that off. Perhaps this isn't the most exciting thing to do on Monday, I won't lie. However, it's hopefully pretty chill, all right? You can see there's lots of NSAs, NSBs, VSA, VSB, volumes, always in liters, moles, usually concentration times uh, volume, all right? And once you do that, you just plug and chug. So I don't, I'm hoping none of this is like hardcore weird or anything like that. It's just. Maybe not the most exciting thing on a Monday, but it can be really cool because you can find the pH literally of any acid and base coming together. So, prop that back. Okay, one more region. What happens when you get past equivalence? So we saw that it takes 50 milliliters to get to equivalence. Well, what's the pH when you get to say 55 milliliters? All right, and any number past that. So 55 milliliters of NaOH. We're curious what happens. All right, now. Earlier, we saw that the moles of strong acid, 0 0.0050 moles. And again, that has not changed. We haven't added any more HCl. That's not usually what happens. You'll change the titrant, the plus part, plus SB, but you won't change what you start with usually. So what we're gonna do here, we'll find the moles of strong base, we'll compare it to moles of strong acid, make sure we're post-equivalence, and then put it in that post-equivalence equation. So moles of strong base, concentration, 0 0.100 molar NaOH, 55 milliliters would be 0 0.055 liters. So 0 0.0055 moles is NSB, and this number is larger than NSA. So that's the ultimate way to tell you're in the post-equivalence region now. So when you're in post-equivalence, it looks more like 14 plus log hydroxide. So we need to find moles of strong base left over. That'll be the moles of the hydroxide. We'll divide it by the total volume, which comes from both the strong base and the strong acid. So moles of strong base minus moles of strong acid. We've got a non-zero number right there, positive number. Divide it by the total volume. Do all the math, pH 11.7. And at this point, you should check yourself because if you're in post-equivalence, it's no longer going to be acidic. You'll no longer have a pH that's less than seven. It should be a pH which is greater than seven, okay? Okay, so taking all these values then, you can construct a graph, all right? And you've got an initial pH, which Stephanie said was pretty acidic, about one. You've got a pH at about 45 milliliters, which was 2.3. Of course, at seven, you're gonna have that equivalence point pH, which is uh, about equal to seven. And then finally, when you go past equivalence, your pH will start to get basic. So you can see how these points kind of fall in the S curve, all right? And you can make a graph and stuff like that if you wanted to. With only four points, it wouldn't be quite this cold, but it would still have the overall form of them. You should see it generally progressing to a more basic pH all the time, all right? You won't see it go like more acidic, base, less acidic, this kind of thing, all right? It's always gonna be consistently going in one direction. Questions? All right, this is a strong base plus strong acid titration. Now, I'm not gonna go into this one in as much detail, but if you look at the similarities, it's pretty similar. Only on this one now, you're starting with a strong base. Remember what you start with there, that's what you start with. And the second thing is what you're adding from the burette. So we're starting with a base. So at zero milliliters, it'll be a basic pH. And as you add strong acid to it, the pH becomes more acidic. You go through a pre-equivalence region, but now the moles of strong base are greater than the moles of strong acid. Equivalence point, moles of strong base, strong acid are equal, so pH is seven. And post-equivalence, now the moles of strong acid dominate over the moles of strong base. So you will see pH less than seven when you get down to this region. Now the nice thing about Sa plus Sb and this one, which is SB plus SA, is the equations are pretty similar. 
Um, your pH initially is the pH of a strong base. So 14 plus log hydroxide or moles of strong base divided by volume of strong base. So instead of having a pH which was acidic when we had a strong acid, now the pH is just going to be basic. The pre-equivalence region uh, equation, this part up here, is the same as the post-equivalence equation in the last one, all right? Because again, you've got a strong base dominating over the strong acid. So it also is 14 plus log, essentially hydroxide. You need to find leftover moles of strong base divided by the total volume. But it is the same equation. So these equations are used a couple times over and over. And likewise, at equivalence, your pH is 7. And likewise, post-equivalence here is the same as pre-equivalence before. Because now the moles of strong acid dominate. It's going to look like pH equals minus log hydronium. So moles of strong acid left over divided by total volume is the way to find the pH, which is pretty cool. Hydroxide ion is a strong base. It can be consumed in the body with a weak acid, such as dihydrogen phosphate ion produced in the kidney. In the reaction, an H plus ion transfers from the acid to the hydroxide ion to form water and HPO4 2 minus ion, the weak conjugate base of the weak acid. So what we're going to do now is look at weak acid plus strong base, all right? And weak acid plus strong base will have similarities to strong acid plus strong base. But because it's a weak acid, we're going to have to think a little bit about Ks, all right? So in this case, that would be a Ka for a weak acid. So weak acids and strong bases do have similarities to strong acids plus strong bases. But there are a couple of notable differences. First of all, at equivalence, where the moles of what you started with, weak acid, equal moles of what you're adding, strong base, those two are equal to each other, but all the weak acid has now turned into its conjugate base. And bases have pHs which are basic, which are greater than 7. So again, someone hands you some random acid, all right, you do the titration on it, you see the equivalence point is greater than seven, that's because you have a weak acid that you're titrating, not a strong acid. What would be the pH if you had a strong acid that you started with? So, seven, that's right, yeah. If you started with a strong acid and you titrated with a strong base, your equivalence point should have a pH of seven. But here, in these kind, your pHs will be greater than seven. So that's a nice hallmark to tell. Um, another thing, too, is that when you, in this pre-equivalence region, the weak acid, when it reacts with strong base, is turned into its conjugate base. So in this region, you end up with a weak acid and its conjugate base, and that is a buffer, all right? So this pre-equivalence region in here, it kind of acts like a buffer. So we'll talk about buffer regions, and a buffer region is essentially just the pre-equivalence region for these things. Now, my beloved Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, pH equals pKa plus log base over acid. Half equivalence means that the amount of base you've added has knocked out half of the moles of weak acid. So you only, you're down to half the weak acid that you started with. But that half that was knocked out became conjugate base. So at half equivalence, your moles of weak acid and moles of conjugate base the same and log base over acid is like log of one zero. So at this half equivalence point, pH equals pKa. And this is awesome if you're studying a new acid because it's, you know, finding equilibrium constants can be a little funky sometimes, but in a titration, the half equivalence point will tell you that pH and pKa are the same. So if you have a pH, which is equal to pKa, you can solve for Ka, Ka 10 to the minus pKa. Pretty cool. 
So we're going to break these down. We'll talk about the half equivalence point. Uh, half equivalence point has no meaning if you have strong acid plus strong base or strong base plus strong acid. They don't have Ka's or Kb's that are worth anything. But when it comes to weak acids with strong base, and we'll say weak bases plus strong acids, then that half equivalence point can be pretty helpful. Okay, so here's another kind of question just to make sure we're all in speed. At equivalence, we've got a weak acid and we're slowly adding a strong base to it. Equivalence means the moles are equal, all right? So at equivalence, all the weak acid's gone, all the strong base is gone, What's going to be the pH? Greater than seven. Greater than seven. Nice job. These crazy weak systems, they seem kind of wussy almost, right? And stuff, but dang, they got a pH sting when you get to equivalence because they fight back. Weak acid turns into a conjugate base. Bases always have pHs that are greater than seven. So again, that's one way to tell right away if you have a weak, strong acid versus weak, strong base. You can look at that equivalence point to get some kind of sense as to what's going on. Okay, so initially, if you only have the weak acid, we talked in the last section how as long as 100 times K is less than C, uh, you can use this kind of equation, which was minus log square root Ka times Ca. And that's going to apply in these titration calculations 100% of the time, by the way. I put CWA just to point out that it's a weak acid we're dealing with. But as long as you know it's the acid minus log square root Ka times Ca is the way to go. Again, it will be an acidic pH. It won't be as acidic as if it was HCO because Ka is part of it. But it will be something like that. Now, this is the funkiest equation. At pre-equivalence, where the moles of the weak acid are still greater than the moles of strong base, this is the equation that will help you out here. This is the cheese version. It's derived from the Henderson-Hasselbach, but pH equals pKa plus log moles of strong base over moles of weak acid minus moles of strong base. We'll talk more about where this equation comes from in lab this week. But for right now, if you know moles of weak acid, moles of strong base, if you have Ka, minus log Ka equals that number. If you don't have it, you can get it from the graph. Half equivalence, once you know where equivalence is, you can find half equivalence and find pKa from there. At equivalence, the weak acid has turned into its conjugate base. And so at equivalence, we can no longer just say pH equals seven, darn it. But we have to take into account that this is a weak base. So if weak acids are minus log square root Ka times Ca, the weak base is 14 plus log square root Kb times Cb. Now I've rewritten this here. Kw equals Ka times Kb. So instead of Kb, Kw divided by Ka. I do that because a lot of times in these calculations, you'll have Ka, but you won't really have Kb. You won't have a table if it's an unknown acid. So I'm writing it here in terms of things you will have. This over here is the concentration of your weak base. All of the weak acid moles, which you should have had from before, have turned into the weak conjugate base. It's the same number. So really, this should be moles of the conjugate base, but the moles of weak acid that you started with have all turned into the moles of the weak base. Same number. And you divide by the total volume once again. So again, this might get the award for ugliest equation, and I apologize, but I tried to write it in terms of things that you'll have already. All right, you should have Ka from before. You should have moles of weak acid, and you can figure out how much strong base you've had. Finally, the good news is that post-equivalence equation is the same, looks very, 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 very similar to post-equivalence strong acid plus strong base. You've got moles of strong base that are dominating. So it's moles of hydroxide, moles of strong base left over, divided by total volume. In the strong acid, it just said NSA and VSA right there, but it's the same equation, all right? You want to find out how many moles of strong base are left over, divided by the total volume, and you're good to go. Yeah. So 
in that last equation, are you just not accounting for the um, moles of weak base that are formed? Correct. The weak base uh, is always uh, affected by your KV value. And so even if you had 0.1 molar weak base and 0.1 molar strong base, the weak base, you'd have to account for the K, and it's usually at least 100 times less than the strong base. So again, if, if you really are doing super analytical things, you may have to do some finagling around the equivalence point, I won't lie. But 99% of the time, Aiden, this works really good because strong base will dominate over the small amount of weak base that's present. Excellent observation. Other questions? So let's go through an example with this one as well, because I know it's a little bit weird. Um, benzoic acid is actually a fairly common weak acid. Benzoic acid is a benzene ring with a carbon, a carboxylic acid group on it. So this is a C double bond OOH. If that's all Greek to you, just ignore everything I said. Um, Benzoic acid loses this hydrogen, these hydrogens aren't acidic, to make what's called the benzoate ion. So this little hydrogen on the carboxylic acid is the part that falls off. You have a C double bond O, it's minus one, it's resonance stabilized, all those kind of things from Chem 222. But again, if all that's Greek, just ignore it. Um, I'm gonna abbreviate benzoic acid as HBZ, and the benzoate ion, the conjugate base, BC minus, all right? But now you know what's happening. Now, because it's a weak system, we're back in equilibrium world, so we're gonna use double-sided arrows. Weak acids will have Ka's associated with them. In this example, we can look up the Ka, 6.3 times 10 to the minus five. Again, like I said, if you didn't know the acid, that half equivalence would tell you the value, but we'll, we'll see this later. So in this problem, we've got 100 milliliters of a 0.025 molar solution of the acid, and we're reacting it again with 0.100 molar NaOH. Notice that the concentrations are different here, so we're gonna have some differences in the calculations that way too. But anyway, it says, what's the pH of your initial solution? And it gives you the Ka. Now initially, all right, it's only the benzoic acid we need to worry about. And because 100 times K, this number, would be 6.3 times 10 to the minus three, and that's bigger than this number, which is 2.5 times 10 to the minus two. So 100 times K less than C, we can use the quick uh, equation version, which is minus log square root Ka times Ca to find the pH. So let's do it. So again, as long as 100 times K is less than C, you can use this. I'll be honest, it's gonna be 100% of the time in these kind of problems I'm gonna to send to you. In the real world, maybe you wanna be a little bit more careful. So again, this times 100 is less than this. So minus log square root Ka times Ca would be the way to go. You don't need a quadratic formula. So plug and chug, Ka 6.3, 10 to the minus five, concentration 0 0.025, pH 2.90. So again, check it that it's a pH that's acidic, less than seven. It is. It's not as acidic as the one that Stephanie saw earlier, which was the HCl, that was a pH of one. Uh, we're not dealing with that strong of an acid, but that's okay. Questions? Okay. After 10 milliliters of sodium hydroxide have been added, we can find the pH as well. But now we're gonna to have to really compare our molds to figure out where we are in the equivalence region. Are we at equivalence? Are we pre-equivalence, post-equivalence, stuff like that. And remember, 1,000 milliliters per liter, and big M is moles per liter. So this is again a weak acid plus strong base. We're gonna compare the moles of the HBZ weak acid to the moles of the strong base. So for the weak acid, we have 100 milliliters, which is 0 0.100 liters times the concentration. Big M, remember, moles over liters, 0 0.0025 moles. The strong base at 10 milliliters would be 0 0.010 liters times the molarity, 0 0.0010 moles. So looking at these two numbers, this is bigger than this. 
So the moles of what we started with are greater than the moles of what we're uh, adding. This means this is a pre-equivalence region. And a pre-equivalence region, we do have to take into account that the benzoic acid that reacts with the sodium hydroxide is turning into its conjugate base. So when, actually I'll do this now on Wednesday. This minus this will tell us how many moles of the weak base we have, and we'll use that difference to tell the weak acid. We'll use HH equations. Oh boy, any questions? All right, have a good day. Thanks for being here. See you on Wednesday.